Well, this is great, and uh, it's pretty well known. I did say you were a bit of a science nerd. And I, uh, I think whenever people think about science, Bill, your name comes up, because as far as science education is concerned, you've done it all. And you keep plugging along, and, we, and we're hearing more and more about how science is important in this world. And I think I want to start by asking how the two of you just got really turned on to science and, and how we turn on our next generation, because some of those people are in this room right now. So it's everywhere. But, but I, think, I think there's, there's a bit of a wrong approach in your question, Kate, because that asking, you know, when did we discover that we were fans of science, the thing is, that every single human being starts off as a scientist. When you're a baby, you are a scientist. If I you know, make this noise, wow, I get milk. Uh, if I uh, push this button uh, or knock this thing off the table, uh, it lands on me and it hurts. Uh, you're curious, you're, you're curious, you're always asking questions about, well, why is the sky blue? What does this do? What does that do? Why is this this way? Well, what do you mean that you know, there's gonna be consequences if I do this? You know, being a kid is constantly testing, discovering, hypothesis, uh, you know, experiment, uh, solution, learning. It's as we grow older, we start to forget about being scientists. And I think for me, the more we can get young people to realize that asking those questions and continuing to ask tough questions about how the world works, why the world works this way, why things are this way, why are they not this other way, is absolutely essential. And making sure that we're encouraging that freedom of, of, of curiosity, empowering people to actually uh, chase down those questions that nobody has been able to answer yet uh, is hugely important, both as a society, but also deliberately as we face what is an uncertain future. We know there are going to be massive disruptions in our world, uh, whether it's through through the automation and, and AI and, and the transformation of the workplace, the transformation of work. These kinds of things can be really, really scary. But one of the things we're seeing in some places in the world is people saying, okay, well, we're going to stretch out this phase as long as we can and resist the changes coming. And here in Canada, we've made another decision. We've said, you know what? <coughs> that change is coming. Let's be part of it. In indeed, let's lead on it. That's why we invested $100 million in AI research uh, across the country over the past, uh, past year. Uh, and why we're putting close to $4 billion now in science, specifically a lot of it in fundamental research. One of the conversations people have had over the past you know, years has been, oh, commercialization. Let's make sure we're investing in innovations that are going to make money quickly so we can get a return on investment rapidly on science. And yes, there's a lot of things we can and should be improving in terms of commercialization in science, and that'll always be an important piece of it. But the fundamental stuff is essential. The stuff you don't know how you're going to make money off of it five years from now, 10 years from now, even 20 years from now. But the discovery for discovery's sake, for building blocks that will eventually lead to new discoveries and new approaches to solving problems nobody even expected. That fundamental research is essential. It takes a confident nation willing to say, you know what, we're going to invest now in our young researchers who are going to follow their curiosity because we know 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, that's going to make a massive difference in the everyday life of everyone, we hope. But that knowledge for knowledge's sake and that excitement about it is uh, a big part of what uh, this budget is all about and why I'm so excited and optimistic about the future we have in a challenging world because we're investing in giving Canadians the tools to do that. Two days ago, and I'm absolutely serious, I watched a YouTube video with my son, who's 10, uh, about them. Some guy dropped a molten hot or red hot ball of metal into a glass filled with Skittles uh, to see what would happen. And, and you know, th there's, there's so many of those slow motion, exploding things. <laughs> 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 Well, what would you think happened? I think you'd have a 
Uh, rapid melting. Rapid melting, and yes. A gas evolved, they might have a it big... It would, no, it wasn't. It was all liquid, but it was like this carbonized black goo that prevents you from ever wanting to eat Skittles again. But that, <laughs> that whole question of... <laughs> that whole question of, well, what happens if you do this? I mean, YouTube is great for that. And that, 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 that access to so many more scientific uh, or pseudo-scientific experiments. What happens if I drop an anvil on a watermelon? I, I'll, I'll never forget uh, a class I did, a science uh, a, 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 in teaching, a science class, uh, where we all had, the challenge was different ways of, uh, of extinguishing a candle or something like that. And one of the, one of the students uh, put a styrofoam cup uh, over a, a, a lit candle, filled it with water, and said, perfect. Uh, I'll, you know, the candle will light, will melt the styrofoam cup, and the water will gush out and put out the candle. Uh, how many of you think that will work? Okay. <laughs> Being dishonest. Thinks, okay, perfect. The candle will melt the styrofoam, and the water will gush out. But of course, the candle, even though it would you know, melt the styrofoam cup if it's empty, will not heat the styrofoam hot enough to melt it on that layer that's touching the water until the water boils and evaporates. So the styrofoam actually won't melt and you will not extinguish the candle. You can actually boil water in a styrofoam cup straight over an open flame. But until you actually see that for yourself or have someone describe it adequately vividly, you think, of course it's going to melt that hole and it's not going to, you won't be able to boil water in a styrofoam cup. So being able, or be one of those cone paper cups, to be able to actually see that happen causes you to rethink some assumptions that you didn't even realize you had. And that challenging one's worldview and causing one to think differently about something that you expected is what science is fundamentally about. And we need to challenge those assumptions we make around just everything we do. And that's where science done well is absolutely essential for everything we do.